Yeah, my name is, uh, is Rob. Uh, I work at the Center for AI Safety. So um, I think, the, as, it, as I said earlier, one perspective I can provide is connections uh, to AI safety. I think that's been discussed uh, quite well by several of our speakers uh, already. So I'm going to actually focus on uh, one kind of aspect of AI strategy and making AI go well. That's my like, particular focus uh, in my research, which is the question of AI welfare. Um, and I'm going to discuss some thoughts I have about how whole brain uh, emulations connect to that. Uh, this, this is who I am. Um, so my background's in philosophy, so I'm very much uh, a newcomer to all of this. Uh, so please excuse any uh, ignorance and uh, uh, tolerate uh, questions. So yeah, I mean, you could kind of uh, contrast, if you wanted to, uh, AI alignment, or like lay them out as two completely separate issues. Um, as I'm already kind of teasing, I don't think they're uh, actually that separate. But you could think of AI alignment or AI safety as broadly, how do we make sure AI goes well for humans uh, or for non-AIs in general? Um, and then you could think of like AI welfare or AI moral patienthood as how do we make sure AI goes well for AI systems? If indeed it makes sense to uh, even say that things can go well uh, or badly for AI systems, which I don't think we have a very firm handle on. But I think these questions are not unrelated. I think questions of AI moral patienthood uh, and certainly questions of how people think about AI moral patienthood are going to really affect the AI strategic landscape. I think they already kind of are starting to. Uh, so one reason I work on this question is I think uh, very soon, if not already, it's going to be important to have kind of sensible things to say about this topic. And I think it's uh, surprisingly neglected in spite of how interested uh, people are. Um, so I'm going to talk some about uh, like thoughts about AI welfare in general uh, as a way of setting up thoughts about um, how whole brain emulation might affect these. Um, I'm not going to say that much to defend these uh, in this short amount of time, but uh, these are four theses that I don't think should be that uh, controversial, but I, I sometimes find uh, are. Um, I think there's like a, a non-trivial chance. Uh, I think it's hard to put firm numbers on it, but a non-trivial chance that AI systems could soon deserve moral consideration. Um, I think there's a quite high chance, and I think everyone should definitely have updated from the Blake Lemoyne case, uh, and from how kind of charismatic uh, and uh, good at talking uh, and attractive AI systems can now be, I think there's a very high chance that many people will soon believe that AI systems deserve moral consideration. Um, and it's really number two where a lot of the intersection with AI safety and AI strategy comes in. Um, and there are like very high risks associated with getting this question wrong, with uh, thinking that AIs uh, are, are moral patients when they're not, uh, or with failing to think that they are when they are. You, you get it, they're, they're the two errors, false positives and false negatives. Um, and I think like, there is work we can do on this. Um, this is mostly just like definitions, maybe just like we'll talk about this later. Um, I, I feel I, consciousness and sentience get used in like tons of ways, different ways. I think there are like pretty sensible and well-defined ways of using these terms. Um, yeah, I, I guess one, one key thing from this slide is just, I, I don't think that we should put everything on consciousness uh, necessarily as like whether AIs deserve moral consideration. It is what I've focused on, um, but I, I don't think we should be putting all of our eggs in that basket. Uh, but I do think for like whatever we think grounds moral consideration, it's quite plausible that either it will emerge as a side effect of AI capabilities research, uh, just as a lot of interesting things emerge as a side effect of AI capabilities research, uh, and also, people will deliberately try to create uh, conscious AIs. In fact, people already do try to do that. Um, and as capabilities get better, I think that might become more feasible. Um, yeah, number two, I already alluded to Blake Lemoyne. Uh, just consider this a bunch of pictures that sort of prime your intuitions that a, a lot of people might soon be feeling concern for, uh, for AI systems. Oh yeah, this is one of my favorite uh, tweets on the topic. Um, yeah, absent regulation, I think the engines of capitalism have only barely begun to like make AIs that are like really designed to prime our uh, concern. Um, and also, we have all sorts of innate uh, biological sort of systems that like attribute mindedness and moral patienthood to uh, to things. Uh, it would be bad to get this wrong. And yeah, this. this I only have a minute, so I'm going to make sure I say something about whole brain emulations uh, and maybe skip over uh, 
one of the more important slides. I think like this is actually a tractable problem and it's, it doesn't just have to be freeform speculation. So a lot of what I'm trying to do in my work is pick some of the low hanging fruit of just talking to people who work on the neuroscience of consciousness. We do have scientific theories of consciousness. They're not great, but they do say something. And it's not like we know nothing at all about what consciousness is, what pain is, what desires are. And I think we can go ahead and start applying those to AIs. So I think AIs are very tricky to think about in terms of their welfare and in terms of consciousness because they're just very different than anything we've encountered. And our moral intuitions and our scientific theories are often kind of dumbfounded when applied to something that you know, only processes language and is built in a very different way. Um, and I think it's also hard to be certain what people are going to think about AI welfare. I mean, I give reasons to think that they will tend to show concern. Uh, but I think there's like a lot of different ways it could go. In contrast, I think of whole brain emulations as kind of an easy case. As long as you're not like really committed to it absolutely having to be biology, M's are, by definition, very similar to us. And they will say they're conscious, they'll say they feel pain. Um, and by definition, there'll be very, very deep similarities between why they do that and why we do it. And by the same token, they'll also be widely thought to be moral patients. So I think one interesting, yeah, two interesting upshots of this, and then I'll conclude. Um, if we were to have M's before uh, uh, AGI or before things get really crazy, um, which, like a lot of people, I don't think is uh, super, super likely. One thing is that uh, it might make people more disposed to attribute moral patienthood to synthetic beings, since there will have now been one kind of thing on a computer that they're pretty sure is a moral patient. Um, you know, everyone will be like, oh, well, my, you know, my cousin is in a computer. You know, everyone, everyone will have someone in their family uh, who is in a computer. So, and that might, like, warm them up to thinking that AI is a moral patient. And then another one is just that, as with alignment, uh, M's might be able to help us get less confused uh, about these things. Okay, that's all I've got. Uh, these are places on the internet where... Okay, one question. Uh, Robert, just to infer my use of the word that they'll deserve moral consideration soon, that you think that ChatGPT4 does not deserve moral consideration. Is that true, and if so, why? Ooh, um, yeah, I think it very likely does not deserve moral consideration. How would you know? Uh, well, I don't think I would know for certain, but uh, yeah, here's, here's some things that I do when I think about this, and I also do this with animals. It's like, uh, if you look at how it does things, do we find the structural or computational analogs to pain and suffering? Uh, again, it's hard to know what's going on in ChatGPT, for sure, but I don't think we actively see those. And two, from an evolutionary standpoint, it would be very strange to me if it like, had developed the like, computational analog of suffering. We can't know that for certain, and that's all like, very provisional. But I guess like, given it's sort of, uh, yeah, I, I haven't seen like, a strong positive reason to think that it has states that I like, really care about morally. Um, you said yeah. either suffering or consciousness makes you be a moral patient. So while it might not suffer, like, why are you so confident it's not conscious? given that you understand literally nothing about how it works on the inside? So yeah, that was slide four, and I guess I, I, I should have spent more time on that. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I thought you were saying we understand nothing about how consciousness works. Um, I, well, I also don't think we understand nothing about how ChatGPT works. I mean, you know, we know like, the basic setup. Uh, we have done some interpretability work. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. Thank you.